Welcome to match five. We're on the play. Let's see if we can sweep this league. Um, yes, please. This hand is excellent. Ah, magic online. Never really wanting to respond when Phyrexian Mata is in play. Windswept Teeth. I like our matchup against most Windswept Teeth decks. Unless this... Maybe it's Titan Shift? It's Titan Shift! Okay. Well, our hand's good for it. We have Cranial Plating. We're on the play. Let us race. This is just attacking for as much damage as we possibly can, and I will absolutely sacrifice things if he's trying to go for a lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Um, I don't really need this Ink Moth Nexus. I think I like Ornithopter more than that. I definitely like the Mox Opal more than it. It's the lowest priority artifact I have left in play, since it takes mana to keep it as an artifact. Well, our opponent's at one, so I think we've probably got this. Uh, it's hard to imagine a, a Titan Shift hand that beats this, but eh, maybe it's possible. Nope. All right. Game two. Edge Champion does not race well, Blood Moon is amazing, Thoughtseize is great, and Galvanic Blast is just a glorified Lava Spike. Let's go! It's for matchups like Titan Shift that I really enjoy having three Blood Moons in the sideboard. This deck is very popular right now, and Blood Moon is just incredible against it. But also incredible is just fast hands, and this is that, so I will keep. Um, if I draw a land, then I will play both Vault Scourges this turn. If I do not draw a land, I will play the Cranial Plating. Um, a attacking with the cranial plating on turn two is the most important thing we can do, but we would rather be attacking with vault scourges with a cranial plating if possible. That's annoying. 
I don't like that. Um, well, our hand just got a lot slower. Uh, I have to say, this is the first time I've actually seen uh, Chalice being played out of um, Titan Shift. I, I think Chalice on the play is fine against Affinity. On the draw, it's uh, terrible. Uh, don't be the person playing Chalice of the Void on the uh, on the draw against Affinity. It's it's just a bad idea. Unless you're like Titan Shift trying to get it on Chalice on two in the mid game, which is okay. Uh, there's too high of a chance of him playing a sweeper next for turn for me to not want to route the Ravager. Um, also, this way it doesn't have uh, summoning sickness, we can sacrifice it and some lands to do shenanigans, and we can still play and equip an attack with Cranial Plating uh, next turn, which is worth it. Uh, with a Prismatic Omen, he's not very far off of just winning if he gets Shift and a couple more lands. We're also shut off red since we lack the ability to cast our Mox Opal. Another Mox Opal is not what we want here. So the question is, do we want to trade off a Arcbound Ravager, do give him the option of trading Ravager for Corsair of Crefix. Um, and I think we do. I think get, letting him get too many lands is a disaster. And so we'll go for the one extra damage and giving him the option. If he doesn't take it, then we got one extra damage in, which helps in the race. And generally, with Prismatic Omen, if they're going off with um, Shift or Valakut, then they're just getting too many Valakut triggers to actually have the life gain from Valscourge matter. If there wasn't a Chalice of the Void in play, we would have lethal infect damage next turn. But, with Chalice of the Void, we have three completely dead cards, so that's unfortunate. Hmm. The Lightning Bolt's interesting. Um, I think with the Lightning Bolt on top, we're incentivized to not trade off the Ravager so that we can... Um, eat and mass pump a creature in response. So I'm inclined to play out both of these things, equip to Vault's Courage and attack to get the most uh, most damage in this turn. Before we wanted to uh, trade off the Ravager with the Corsair of Griflex to prevent him from getting extra lands, but now we're just praying that he doesn't have Titan or Shift. Um, Titan we might actually be able to fight through since we have enough creatures, because it would be get, getting plus two lands, which would be four triggers, so one of our creatures would live. Um, assuming he doesn't have another untapped land in his hand, and doesn't have another land on top of his deck at any point in time. So he, draw, he drew a lightning bolt, and there is still a lightning bolt on top. So the real question now is, does he have Shift or Titan? It looks like he has Shift. Or, no, it looks like he has Titan. Uh, it's probably a Titan. Nope, Shift. Alright, so... Uh, he just gets four Valakuts and two other lands, and gives five... 20 lightning bolts or something? I think.
Yeah, I think that's enough follow cut triggers. We don't need to see this play out. Ah, uh, Chalice of the Void, doing the work. All right. Well, Chalice doesn't matter this game because we're on the play. And so we will not have zero drops stuck in our hand. This hand is fine. We have a turn one thought seize, turn two steel overseer, turn or or cranial plating, depending. Yep, this is good. Sometimes it's a shame to cast Thoughtseize on the early turns, um, but we're probably going to be mana constrained later on in the later game, since we only have two lands and have a lot of stuff we want to do with our mana. Um, it's nicer to cast it on like turn four, and you can say, ah, do we need to take the payoff or not? Uh, here they have interesting hand. Bolt, Elder, Crufix, and Scapeshift. So if we just try to race... So, if we take Scape Shift, we're essentially betting that they don't draw any other payoffs until by the time we... until we win. If we take Bolt, we're trying to race them. And if we take Cru Corsair of Crufix, it's because we don't want them to get enough values and we want their draws to be awkward. Uh, hmm... So, assuming I draw nothing, like uh, uh, expensive cards I can't cast, what is our fastest clock? We do a Steel Overseer, and then a Cranial Plating. So Steel Overseer turn 2, Cranial Plating turn 3. If we draw a land by turn 4, then we equip Plating and bash with Ink Moth. So we have a turn 5 Ink Moth kill if we get rid of the Bolt. I think I will take Bolt and hope he doesn't draw any more interaction. Stomping Ground is out. Ink Moth. So here we plating equips uh, swing with signal pest, and then next turn uh, we put it on ink moth nexus. And if he has no interaction, we are winning on turn four. So that gives him three draws at finding any kind of meaningful interaction. Actually, we don't even need to go for the infect kill. Since he's already down so much life. Sakura Tribe Elder and Windswept Heath. So we still don't know any of his draws. So we can play Steel Overseer Vault Scourge and swing for six damage. Meaning that if he doesn't have interaction next turn, he's dead. But we play into really hard into a sweeper that way. If we go for the in Ink Moth Nexus kill, we're not playing into really hard into a sweeper, but we are playing really hard into spot removal. Whereas going for Steel Overseer Vault Scourge is better against spot removal. Um, it probably has more spot removal. Um, Grudge and Lightning Bolts than he does Angers. So I think I'm going to go for the damage route. And not the Infect route. Um, I suppose I can attack with the Memnite. Maybe he jump blocks and forgets to sack, but 
he's gonna just block the Mem Knight and sack, and it's not going to matter. So we get extremely punished by a sweeper of any type that he drew in the last three turns. And other than that, we're in a very good position, especially if we draw any sort of... No, Corsair of Crufix is not a sweeper. So if we draw any sort of... Um, colored mana, uh, like uh, black mana, then we're in even better shape because we could... Because um, right now he can still Lightning Bolt and stay alive for another turn. Uh, if we had a black source, a second black source, then we could instant speed equip Cranial Plating for a guaranteed lethal of this turn. As it is, I think we just play the Citadel, activate both Ink Moths, uh, activate the Steel Overseer. And this way... He needs, like, Lightning Bolt into more Lightning Bolts to... Okay. Got there. Alright. Another 5-0. Excellent. Um, cool. See you for the next league.